Today, Block reports a $34 million loss in Bitcoin. FTX faces new competition in its bid to buy Voyager Digital. And a royal family uses NFTs to preserve centuries of priceless artifacts. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Kate Rooney. Digital currencies are rising to close out the week. By noon Eastern, Bitcoin traded at $23,000, Ether traded near $1,700, and Binance's token jumped to $311. New employment data shows the U.S. added 528,000 jobs in July. That was more than twice as many as Wall Street expected. That's helping to ease some fears of recession, at least for now and giving riskier assets like crypto a boost heading into the weekend. Then there's growing hope for Ethereum's merge. A new report from Citi says the network's transition to proof of stake will boost transaction speeds and bring down energy costs. The bank also said the merge could bring in more revenue for Ethereum holders. Ether has rallied in recent weeks as the network upgrade nears completion. On the regulatory front, lawmakers seem to be taking crypto regulation seriously with a bunch of new bipartisan bills announced in recent weeks that are all targeted at regulatory clarity. City says that it's looking increasingly likely that the CFTC will be the ones to regulate crypto rather than the SEC because the crypto industry agrees that that's the right agency to regulate. It's also more likely to support at least one of these bills passing. Okay, on to the top stories. First, Block reported earnings yesterday and took a revenue hit because of Bitcoin. The payments platform reported a $36 million Bitcoin loss thanks to tanking prices and its cash app business saw a 34% reduction in Bitcoin revenue. Block is facing the same problem as exchanges like Coinbase and Robinhood, falling crypto prices and slower trading volume. By the way, look out for Coinbase earnings coming up on Tuesday, August 9th. Next, FTX might not be the only firm trying to buy Voyager Digital. According to a report from Bloomberg, embattled crypto lender Voyager is fielding offers from multiple bidders, all of whom offered more than Sam Bankman Freed's company. Voyager actually rejected SBF's offer, calling it a lowball bid. Last, Meta is growing its NFT offerings. Instagram will expand NFT support to 100 countries after a successful trial period that started in May. Meta is also expanding support for Coinbase wallets and Dapper wallets. The social media giant's Web3 aspirations are no secret given the name, but it's facing increasing pressure from regulators trying to block its metaverse acquisitions and skepticism from industry experts like Ethereum creator Vitalik Buterin. NFTs have gathered a lot of attention for mutant apes and pricey animations, but a European royal family has found a whole new use case. For our main story of the day, Crypto World's Mackenzie Sigalos traveled to Prague to talk to Czech Prince William Lobkowicz and his family about how they're using blockchain technology to turn more than 20,000 historical artifacts into NFTs. I'm here at a 9th century Prague castle in the heart of the Czech Republic. I've been speaking to members of a 700-year-old noble family who had their castles and 20,000 cultural artifacts first stolen by the Nazis, then by the communists. But restoring stolen items to their rightful owner isn't the fairy tale that it's made out to be. We probably covered hundreds of thousands of miles. Our objects were taken to over a hundred locations, so we crisscrossed the Czech Republic to recover tens of thousands of movable objects. So we never had any grand illusions of living in castles because the castles were in a dilapidated state. But our goal was and our vision was to open them to the public and make them available to a wider audience. Now, a 27-year-old prince in Prague is turning to the blockchain to protect and preserve those historical objects. We've taken a painting that needs a restoration of some kind. There could be a hole in the canvas, it's damaged in some way, and we uh, create an image of the NFT and sell that NFT at the price of the restoration of the piece. They've sold NFTs that animate X-ray and infrared images so that you can see through to the invisible layers of the canvas that have been painted over. So in the background, you can see a ghostly head, which is sort of coming out over here. And uh, that can show you some of the underpainting, um, where you can see some of the work that Veronese used when he was uh, initially painting these different figures right here. If you're able to see maps in a whole new way here, you're exposing all of them at the same time um, through a generative art piece. And this was quite a controversial thing that we did. Um, a lot of people don't actually like uh, generative art because they don't see that it's in the hands 
of an actual artist. They think the algorithm is actually putting the thing together. They've also minted NFTs of music composed 250 years ago by a Lobkovich princess that never had a public performance. She didn't receive the recognition for her musical talent um, historically. And so we're able to use this technology also to tell stories from history that didn't have an opportunity to be told. It's not just about selling NFTs to support cultural monuments, but it's also looking at how do we preserve a record of our history. Blockchain technology provides an immutable record of our cultural heritage, which you can preserve on chain. And that's something that's never been done before. The family is also considering other applications in the metaverse. Now, it's very early days, but think renting or buying a room in a Czech palace, and the cost of that would go toward renovating the real thing. They're also looking at turning fashion in portraits from the 1500s into gaming skins. Imagine if you could actually own one of those rooms in the metaverse. You could see what it looked like when he was living there at that time, but you're also restoring a space so that you can create a museum in the physical world that people can engage with and be inspired by Dvořák's music, not just in the digital world, but also in the physical. If you want to learn more about that story, you can find the full details over at cnbc.com slash crypto world. That's it for this week. We'll be back here on Monday with a lot more. We'll see you then.